Hi, um, you probably, perhaps some of you know already that I put online a few videos about uh, living with the ENS, empty nose syndrome. I've been, uh, I had a surgery about 10, 12 years ago, suffering ever since. And um, so I had already filled the videos. So I'll put in the comment section of this video, um, I'll put a comment with uh, a resume of all uh, what I'm going to say, so a text and also a link to, our, uh, to the other videos. You can check it out uh, and uh, get more information about uh, my experience with this and stuff. Uh, but this video, uh, I expect it to be the last video of the series, so, so to speak. And uh, it's uh, in this video, I will describe uh, in the first part, uh, so in a couple of seconds, I will describe what kind of uh, actually helped me get through this. Uh, something that I started doing about, about one year ago. Uh, and uh, the second section of the video, I will just talk a little bit about this uh, whole experience, uh, maybe things to do to help uh, yourself, uh, my experience also, and kind of uh, not advice, but just sharing uh, a few tips. So uh, starting with the uh, what uh, helped me, uh, I have to say that uh, this is something that everybody can do. Uh, it's, it takes a little bit of discipline, but not too much. And uh, it's uh, perhaps a life changing thing. Uh, to me, it was uh, completely a turning point. Uh, I don't want to say more. I know uh, living with ENS, it's an it's, um, unbelievable experience. It's, of course, there's no doubt there is a life changing situation and you need to get through it. Um, but uh, this is what I did. Uh, so I had a lot of trouble breathing. Uh, I would say I had three mind uh, symptoms, three mind difficulties, and all of them were happening during nighttime. First, my nostril will get very, very dry, which is already very uncomfortable. My nostrils also, I had a turbinate reduction, uh, but the nostrils will get blocked, stuffy. Uh, no uh, flu, no stuff like that. It's just all year round. Uh, I will just could not breath by my nose. A very, 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 very small amount of air would pass through. This will uh, really uh, ruin my sleep, my rest. Um, and also I was getting a very uncomfortable, weird heart beating through the night very strong heart beating, pumping, completely anormal. Um, I think they call this uh, tachycardia or something like this. So these three things is what were really uh, pulling me down. Uh, I have to say I've lost, I've lost, I quit my job. I was a engineer. I did some research too. I could not keep going on with a uh, intellectual job. So I have to take physical jobs or more uh, not intellectual jobs. Uh, so this is something that will happen to many people. They will lose their job. They will have a lot of trouble in their life. Anyhow, so uh, this past, uh, this happened, um, started uh, 10, 12 years ago when I had a surgery that went wrong. And uh, I did struggle for about 10 years this way really really struggle and uh, i also tried many many things a lot of things i'll talk about this uh, later in this video perhaps uh but uh about i think one one and a half year ago uh it was just kind of uh, i don't know how to speak but it was totally a turning point for me um at some point i just um I guess it happens in life. Uh, it's just at some point you get an idea or something like this. And um, this was just like a blessing for me. And uh, I just, at some point, I got the idea, what if uh, this uh, nose reaction um, could be helped by uh, what I eat, actually. Uh, I know there's a lot of things on internet about eating, uh, about uh, food, types of food, organic, non-organic, and diets and all the stuff. So I'm definitely not into that thing. Uh, when I talk about food and I relate this to ENS, it's strictly something that on myself, I've seen the impact of this. I guess 
I imagine when people hear, oh, the guy has ENS, has suffering and stuff like this. And now he's talking about food. He must be going crazy or something. Uh, not at all, honestly. Uh, even today, when I don't pay attention what I eat through the day, that night is getting awful back again. And it's really not fun to feel that way again. But when I pay attention, most of the times I'm just not back to normal, but it's definitely a massive improvement. So let's just uh, jump straight to uh, the idea behind this uh, diet is that from my personal experience, so I've never read anything on this on internet, no doctors told me about it, is that I noticed when taking some foods at uh, that night, I would getting uh, drier, drier nose, uh, stuffy nose, heart beating, terrible heart beating. Uh, uh, and uh, when I was keeping those food, I would just be relieved from this in good part, not completely. We will never be like before the surgery again, but I would say perhaps 70, 80% like it was before the surgery. You can go to that point. I hope for you guys, I hope for everybody this. Uh, so let me just uh, go straight. Uh, like I said, again, this is in the comment section too. So let me just get a little bit. I have a paper here, a sticker paper in front of me so I could read a little bit. Um, let me just get through the, uh, the kind of foods that would cause me problems. And uh, the one that I, I'm perhaps skipping right now uh, in very good part is everything diary, diary uh, milk products. Um, butter really, uh, was really bad for me. Uh, I use, I'm from Eastern Europe, so I used to spread butter on the bread and eat like that. It's crazy a little bit, but so I had to, uh, uh really toss the butter from my diet. Uh, really, I drink very, very little milk if I ever do so. And if I'm doing it, I will be just really at the bottom of the cup, just for the taste, basically to remember it but I've eliminated the milk altogether. And uh, if I ever take one of these foods, I will take a small amount in the morning, not in the afternoon, not in the evening, even it's even worse. Um, also, I did, um, uh, I'm uh, no longer eating, uh, what, uh, what's with diary, uh, like whipped cream, uh, soft cheese. Um, um, hard cheese, it doesn't seem to have such effect. So I could, chew a little bit of uh, hard cheese. Of course, you need to balance all this. You may need to take calcium uh, uh, pills or something like that to balance a little bit your diet because you are skipping on uh, milk products. Um, so I'm going to list a little bit of the, uh, the ingredients, the foods that I felt like uh, uh, when I would eat them, I would just have those terrible symptoms during night sleep. When I won't eat those foods, I just feel like so much better. So this is my recommendation in this video actually for you people. Uh, so other bad foods for people with ENS uh, would be uh, some spices. Uh, I do remember I was, uh, I used to eat uh, soya sauce. I used to prepare myself some pasta with some uh, um, vegetarian meat or stuff like that. And I was used to spread soya sauce and that would just uh, make my heart race at night. And when I would eliminate it, when I skip the soya sauce in that food, then I will feel so much better during night sleep. Uh, oils don't really help, um, just putting a lot of oils, maybe you get salads or any kind of oils. Um, my, my products, mayonnaise, uh, not good. Um, also I noticed, um, this, this was, would not affect the, uh, not, um, aggravate those symptoms, but this will really made me feel really bad the next day. And this is only since I had that surgery 10 years ago, orange juice. So uh, acidic acid uh, fruits like oranges, I really eat a lot of less of this. And especially if I take a little bit, I will be just in the morning. I really don't take, uh, don't eat an orange in the afternoon or late into the, that day because the next day I really feel really, really weird. I don't know what's uh, the link, 
with the ENS, ENS condition, but it's really a clear effect. You, basically, when I'm talking about all these foods is that <clears throat> this took me a lot of time to figure out which is good, which helps, um, I mean, which is not good for my condition and which uh, uh, doesn't really affect anything. So it took me a lot of time and the way I will do this is really just in one day I will take something, I will take a uh, whatever some milk or something like this and the next day i will skip it i will not take at all and i will just see the difference during the night time how it feels uh, this is how you just basically can just kind of check or put on the blacklist any kind of food um uh yeah uh, once i remember when i was eating that pasta I, at some point i wanted to do a variation and uh, i just started spreading tomato sauce on the pasta and i was all of a sudden my heart started racing during the night sleep the next night so uh, tomato sauce also i put it on the blacklist peanut butter uh, dried grapes uh, there's just random foods that i happen to eat but each has different diet so each one needs to really uh, maybe consider what i'm saying here but also find other foods uh, that they are used to and whether they are good or not uh, so dried grapes, uh, fruits generally, except maybe the orange juice. I don't have a problem uh, eating most of the f uh, fruits and veggies. Um, uh, too much salt in the evening doesn't help. Um, yeah, I think I went through most of these foods, but again, there are other stuffs. Uh, myself, I'm pretty much vegetarian, so I don't really eat meat uh, or fish or stuff like that. But I do happen to eat some now in the one when I'm maybe invited somewhere. Uh, I didn't really feel a reaction from meat or fish or uh, poultry products. I didn't notice uh, anything uh, bad about it, so that may be good, uh, good to eat. Uh, so this is just, uh, again, um, this was the reason for this video, this diet. Um, like I said, uh, the, uh, the change in my life since I paid attention to this diet, it's massive. Um, it's just at some point with ENS, it depends on each one, the level of... Uh, of problem it created uh it's it's just you are struggling a lot uh so since i'm doing this diet since i'm paying attention most of the time of the days i just can have a relatively normal sleep it's not a perfect sleep not a very resting sleep but it's so much better than before so this is my recommendation uh people because uh we look for a kind of a healing from this condition and I've looked all over the internet I guess you people did too uh, there are many suggestions online but the real truth is that there is not really a healing to this condition so changing my diet this way was the only thing that I personally found to help and help really a lot it's not saying i'm just like before the surgery not at all but it's completely different way of living and uh, it's getting you uh, much more uh, stronger with this condition um so that's that's the the end of this section about the diet this is the important part i wanted to share in this video uh, I will now keep going on uh, talking about other uh, details about this condition that you may want if you have time to spare uh, you may want to follow up uh, and uh, keep uh, keep watching this video but uh, like i said uh, for the main message uh, I, it's ending here uh, like i said uh, the sleep uh, before uh, when i was eating everything the sleep would be uh, I, I don't even want to uh, to use a word to describe it because I think many of you people know what's uh, it's how difficult it is uh, but like i said uh, be careful if you feel when you wake up in the night um, with anxiety anxiety maybe um, very um, anxious a lot of anxiety and uh, 
um, anxiety, uh, anxious dreams also, uh, nightmares, but really anxious ones. And you feel your heart beating, really is beating. There, there's, there's a condition where a normal person will wake up all of a sudden in the night and the heart starts racing like this. That's perfectly normal. I'm not sure what's the name, uh, medical name, but that's just very normal condition. Everybody has that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking really about waking up and the heart is really, is like beating in your chest. You really definitely feel it, almost hear it. And it's just keeping like this for as long as you are awake in the night, could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. And it's just, it's just, I cannot describe it. It's like a, a radio, uh, a beat sound that's playing on the radio. It doesn't stop. It's just horrible. It's horrible. And I had to uh, go to, actually I did uh, try to check myself, uh, um, do a, uh, uh, what's the name, like tests or something like this. Uh, I took a uh, rendezvous with a doctor and stuff, but you really need to be careful. And if you have that condition also, like I said in other videos, you may experience, um, I'm sure the camera will focus properly, uh, nail clubbing, that's, that's caused by that heart beating. So check the, uh, the uh, playlist, I will link here in the comment section. Uh, if you feel all those uh, symptoms, uh, you definitely, I mean, definitely want to check your diet the way I'm recommending or the way you will feel, uh, you test yourself and see, uh, how you can, uh, take away some foods and, uh, discard some foods completely from your diet. Uh, that since I did this diet, like I said, all this heart beating completely vanished, absolutely completely vanished. I've, I've no longer have any problem with heart beating. Um, the nose is no longer dry like it was before. It's still not really humid like in a healthy person, but it's definitely no longer dry and also no longer stuff, stuff, stuffy, like blocked, no longer like that. Uh, so that, that this diet changed everything to me. Um, so, uh, like I said, uh, uh it, I just feel so much better since uh, since uh, this uh, this thing, and uh, like I said, the, the sleep is still not the best. Um, I can tell that there is kind of um, you need to get, you need to accept a few things. Uh, the life is anyway is really changed with the ENS. Uh, we need to accept a few things like uh, perhaps you. Are, quite a few people with ENS will have to leave their job. Uh, that's not because we are lazy or something like this. That's just, it's a lot of stress uh, in our life uh, from this condition. Uh, I can tell you that uh, at night, um, it depends now, but uh, I used to sleep maybe three, four hours, wake up, couldn't go back to sleep because I have too much anxiety from not be able to breathe or from uh, having my nose really dry, heart beating and stuff like this. So I will stay awake for three, four, two, three, four hours, then felt asleep again for another few hours. So this is really, uh, it's a way of living that's not exactly the best, the easiest, and especially when you work a day. Um, but you have to accept this uh, and still today sometimes i could sleep through the morning but i wake up uh, every three four hours at night and uh, it's a lot of discipline in this um but uh I, I i'm much better now but you have to accept maybe if you have insomnia because of this condition and you wake up every three four hours better not to get frustrated better not to get really pissed off because insomnia gets you pissed off a lot and just accept it try to calm down and, and just uh, maybe uh simply sleep for three four hours then stay awake do something whatever watch tv whatever then go back to sleep and maybe if you have a moment sleeping through during the day two two three four hours it's kind of fragmenting your sleep time but that's how you perhaps need to go from now on uh, so keep optimistic don't uh, don't get frustrated about this uh, kind of situation um yep yeah, i'm reading on this paper here uh yes it's good also to drink water 
but this is kind of difficult for people to get used to drink a lot of water during daytime. I think it, the nose will get uh, much drier if you don't, uh, if or if you drink too little water during daytime. Uh, I don't drink coffee or alcohol, uh, so I don't know how this will impact. Um, it's good, perhaps also uh, one of the things is that uh, you need to pay a little bit of attention if the um, the surrounding area in your where in the place where you are living it's a very dry air. Maybe you are living, I don't know, maybe in uh, Arizona or uh, Texas somewhere. Uh, good to pay attention because dry air doesn't have this condition. This ENS condition will just dry up your nostrils even more so and get them to be stuffy even more so. So it's worse than the condition. I prefer myself to keep the room where I sleep, to keep the door closed during the day. So the humidity you breathe through the night stays in that room, doesn't vent out and also not open my windows uh, when it's uh, hot or warm outside. And I can tell you that opening windows when it's raining outside and preferably uh, I prefer doing this in uh, Saturday, Sunday morning so it's not too polluted outside from the uh, there's highway not far away. So uh, opening the windows when it's raining is getting that humid air inside the house and it's helping a little bit. It's just improving a little bit, uh, especially the night rest. Uh, but um, yeah, you can check in the uh, playlist I have. Uh, I was using at some point a uh, mask on my face with humid, humid hair, a humidifier basically connected to that mask and that helped me through a period of time. You can try it too. Um, some people ask me, uh, and I, I'm going to, um, if there are questions in the video, I'm going to perhaps uh, write down those questions and make another video with questions and answers, just my experience. Uh, so um, if you have questions, people, or uh, maybe you have tips, um, uh, just put them in the comment section and maybe I'll do another video about those questions uh, specifically. But there were people who wonder how could they sleep at night uh, with the mouth open? How could they keep the mouth open during night time? Because when you have dry nostrils, the dryness basically um, causes kind of inflammatory reaction inside the nostrils. There's a mucosa inside the nostrils that can swollen. And uh, when they, this mucosa gets dry, the, uh, there is kind of inflammatory reaction and uh, it, the mucosa, dry mucosa just swollens and blocks the nostrils. So this is what perhaps causes um, uh, no stuffiness and blockage during nighttime. And that's really a very bad, bad thing for people with ENS because they just we are used to keep our mouth shut during night sleep and breath through the nose. But if the nose is blocked and it's just very, very small amount of air passing through and it's also dry, this is just terrible for those persons. So people wonder how do they keep their mouth open during night time so they can breathe by the mouth. It's not ideal to breathe by the mouth because the mouth doesn't humidify the air that gets inside the lungs. Uh, so it's not ideal, but it's so much less worse than uh, trying to breathe through a dry and blocked nostril. It's so much less worse. Um, I did try quite a few things uh, also to in the past uh, to keep my mouth open during uh, sleep. And I can say that's not really easy. Uh, I did try devices. I had a, uh, a protective uh, piece like uh, the people who do box uh, or kickboxing uh, use to protect their teeth. So I tried to use that to keep my my uh, mouth somehow open, but it all also always act uh, pressing against the teeth. So it's really uncomfortable and it's not very healthy for your teeth either. So there's no device on the market that will keep your mouth open uh, that you perhaps put inside your mouth and just keep the uh, teeth uh, dis at a distance so you can breathe by the mouth. Uh, there's no such thing, or such thing on the market. Um, what I do sometimes when I feel I need to keep my mouth open, especially when I go to sleep 
and I fell asleep is that uh, I like to use a large pillow and I recommend you uh, use a large pillow. Basically, I recommend you try to have the at least the head but the upper section of the body more elevated because this will force the, uh, the heart to pump a little bit more blood inside your head and inside the nostrils and may humidify a little bit better the nostrils. So this is a good recommendation. This is also good for people who have sinusitis. So try to get a pillow or two that are, are thicker and larger and try to rest. You get used to it, but try to rest the upper portion of your body at a higher elevation than the rest of the body. Anyhow, so I have a large pillow and when I go to bed, I just lay down on my side. So the pillow is going to be on the side of the face and I just keep the pillow like this and I just crumble it a little bit to make a bump on the pillow surface and I will just basically kind of bite it with my mouth. So I will just stay like this, my mouth against the pillow like this on the side and kind of biting that small bump in the pillow and I will try to get asleep like this. And at least for the first part of the night, I will sleep with my mouth open this way. Uh, it's not you need to get used to this and it's not working maybe through all the night but it's still a little bit of things that help you and you also need to swallow the saliva at some point you won't be uh, liquid anymore saliva but you need to swallow it a few times and perhaps uh, after a moment uh, you won't feel like it's leaking out because it's kind of gross uh, so this is what i do really uh, when i feel like i want to uh, uh, sleep more comfortable at night uh, and uh, sleep with my mouth open. I have to say that uh, I was talking about that diet. Uh, it may happen. I just don't pay attention and I eat something uh, in the evening and um, it may happen. I, I just don't pay attention basically and then I get again those symptoms from ENS. So it's not perfect, but uh, when this happens, you may try to uh, Maybe you are invited at a party or um, some anniversary stuff and you eat something there and it's not that good thing for you and you go back, uh, go to sleep that night. So if you want to prevent those CNN symptoms, just simply try to uh, get to sleep with the mouth open. Um, I was talking about that diet and I'm, ge I'm going to put a line uh, underneath the pa that part of the video, but just let me just talk about it uh, too, because this is just as important uh, along with the diet is um, to, um, I would use the word stop eating after a certain hour in the evening. So let's just say you go to sleep at 11 o'clock, taken just an example. In the evening, I would definitely uh, eat my last meal as soon as I can during the day. I would perhaps eat the last meal around three or four in the afternoon. And in the evening, I would just try to chew a, little, a few things just to don't feel too hungry. Uh, I think this pose before you go to sleep, the pose of the last meal and the time when you go to sleep, the larger, the better. It's really if you eat, let's say, uh, relatively heavy meal at 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. and you go to sleep at 10, 11 p.m., this is not good. This will not definitely not help your sleep with ENS. So that's a second tip uh, along the diet. Just try not to sleep as many hours as you can before going to bed. It's not exactly easy because sometimes we may just get hungry just 30 minutes, one hour before going to bed and you are tempted to eat something at that point. So it's really, really careful with that thing. Uh, I can say some many times I will just try to um, uh, try to just uh, drink some apple juice, like a natural one, like pressed apples. Uh, this helps me just kind of uh, just uh, don't feel hungry uh, any longer and uh, go uh, to sleep. Uh, but uh, again, no big food and preferably no food be several hours, five, six hours before going to sleep. Be careful, some foods take longer to digest. So you don't want to get those foods uh, and um, still digesting those foods when you are asleep. That will definitely not help for the people with dry and stuffed nose uh, with ENS condition. Um, yeah, now I, I just uh, like to talk about, like I said, I've tried, uh, I've been 
trying to find a solution for this condition uh, for several several years now. Uh, of course, the first the first reaction was to ask doctors, but uh, like I said in other videos, they will not help you. Unfortunately, at best they will give you maybe some uh, creams or they will recommend you um, get a Q-tip and spread inside your nurses some oils and stuff, stuff like this. Um, I did try many, many things. Like I said, I even tried a uh, mask with humidified air. Uh, I did try a lot of oils. I read a lot of things on internet. Um, and I've tried a lot of oils. People say at yeah, many places, try this oil, try this sesame oil or whatever name, sarazine, or there's a lot of information. And I've tried tons of this, even Vaseline and stuff like this. Uh, none of this helps actually. I'm sorry to say that none of this helps. It's really not just temporary. It will never stay throughout the night at all. Not even one hour throughout the night sleep. Uh, but it's just not helping, doesn't really, uh, what you see, the problem uh, we have with ENS is most people with ENS get dry nostrils. When the nostrils or the mucosa inside the nostrils gets dry, there's nothing you can help with this. There are people saying you can uh, suggest some stem cells treatments. I'm not aware what this is. There's none in my area. You can try talk with a doctor about this. But if you want to take uh, to try natural things, oils, uh, also sprays, nasal sprays. There's a lot of nasal types of sprays. Um, some of them are for long-term use. Others are really temporary and very short-term use. So you don't aggravate your condition. Uh, cortisols and all the stuff. I, I really went through all these things. Uh, some of them were uh, over the counter, other with a prescription and uh, some may relieve, some of these sprays may relieve, but you can never use these things. Well, there are people who use them years, year after year, but it seems in the long term, it was just, there are side effects to it and it may just damage actually the mucosa even more so. Um, you, you may try them. Personally, I did try all those. Uh, there are a lot of types of sprays, uh, but I did not feel that relief and I did, did not feel that it did improve my condition and also on the long term because we are going to live with this long term. Uh, in opposition, this diet, since I tried, I started this kind of diet and also paid attention to not eat before sleeping this was night and day situation. This was completely changed. Uh, again, without making me like before the surgery, but it's not even comparable with the suffering you experience when you have the NS. So if you want to try all those uh, balms and sprays, go ahead, but I'm just sharing my own experience. It, it wasn't helping me at this point. Um, Oh, one of the things uh, I do talk in my other videos, and I'm going to uh, speak about it now. Um, one of the things that definitely helped me before I started this diet, because I, before I knew about this diet, uh, was to use saline water to do uh, nasal irrigation. And I have a video about this, and it's very, very simple. Just start slowly with a very uh, small concentration of salt. Never start this with a lot of salt because it is, it's going to be really, really painful. But I, I just checked my playlist. There is a video specifically on this. Uh, I do strongly recommend you start uh, do nasal irrigation, but don't go with those uh, bottles from the drug stores because not only they are expensive, but they just don't work well. And um, you can do this at home. Prepare your uh, saline water at home. Use a bottle of anything that you already have at home and work with this. And I strongly advise people who had dry nostrils and ENS condition, start right away doing uh, nasal irrigation with this saline water several times a day. I would do it, if I remember well, even every hour of the day. So it's not a thing that you only do in the morning or before going to sleep. You have to do it all day long 
both nose streams. I'm, I show in that video exactly how to do it. It's extremely simple. It doesn't cost you any money and you just can even carry a small bottle with you at your job and go in the bathroom uh, every hour or so and just do this. And this is relieving through the day and normal sleep. Unfortunately, this doesn't work through the night for obvious reasons. You cannot wake every hour in the night to irrigate your nostrils. Uh, but if you happen to really wake up in the night and feel that very discomfort uh, from dry nostrils, you can go ahead and do some irrigation. Uh, so um, I did this for several years, that nasal irrigation, and I can say that at some point it kind of improves your condition. It's not right away at all, not even after a few months, but it's all about the discipline. When you, we, when you have ENS, you need to understand your life is no longer the same as before and you need to work yourself. Don't wait for the doctors. You are going to waste time. It's up to you to take yourself by hand and work these things and uh, just help your life. It's going to teach you a discipline. It's going to teach you also a um, self-confidence at some point because you are or you are helping yourself at that one so go ahead with these salt water irrigations uh very much recommend i think the three main things that helped me the most uh were these salt water irrigations uh, the diet and also not eating food before going to sleep these are the three main things that really helped me the most and also i had that small mask with the humidified air uh, that i use for about one year or so uh, but uh, that mask, it's, it's worth trying it. Uh, it did help me a lot, but I would say just start with the diet and nasal irrigation and pay attention what you eat. And this is going, I hope, and it's just my wish, a, a really honest wish that helps the most people uh, with this condition the most. It helps you the most, guys. Um, like I said, there's my my experience there's not many other things that can help out there um let me just get through my list here i did read a few things uh yeah i think i've uh, i've went to uh pretty much everything that was here yeah this is it so um and a long video, perhaps not the longest one I ever did. Uh, I have to say uh, again, this a, um, all this started with the uh, nose surgery. Um, they call this. Um, uh, I, I forgot. I just don't remember now. And by the way, this also will happen perhaps to you guys. You your memory will start kind of get less good than before. That's perhaps because of. Uh, this uh, night sleep that is no longer that healthy as before is interrupted. So if you experience uh, maybe loss of memory, especially short memory, uh, don't be surprised. This comes with the condition uh, along. Um, but like I said, uh, I, so I had this surgery 10, 10 12 years ago. Um, I have my lower turbinates removed and there are techniques. Um, uh, there are techniques doctor use and some techniques are less invasive, others are more invasive and destroy the mucosa that's inside the nostril. That mucosa is critical. That's, that's perhaps one of the most important part uh, is that mucosa stays healthy and can humidify the air that gets inside the lungs. Uh, so my surgery did ruin that mucosa because the technique that uh, surgeon did use and many of them still use that technique today is that uh, if you see the mucosa from one side as it goes deep inside the nostril, uh, the, the surgeon, the, the mucosa is covering the turbinate. So to access the turbinate, some, not all the surgeons will just cut along the mucosa, expose the turbinate, then reduce the turbinate. And this destroys the mucosa because the mucosa it's it has a array a very um, a web of uh, fine uh, uh, blood vessels that brings uh, blood to the mucosa and helps the mucosa to be very humid at the surface where uh, whereas when you cut along the mucosa if the doctor uses this technique it's simply sectioning those arrays those blood vessels that uh, that pass through the mucosa so 
it cuts that circulation of blood inside the mucosa and I believe it's more or less permanent. In my case, it was pretty much permanent. Those uh, blood vessels cannot reconnect, so basically the blood flow, uh, flow toward the, throughout, throughout the mucosa is reduced a lot and this way the mucosa cannot get because the humidity on the mucosa is uh, fluid from the blood flow. So no more blood flow, no more fluid, no more humid mucosa at the surface, no more humid air inside the lungs with all the problems that happens because the lungs need, it's critical for your lungs and this whole body functioning to get that humidity inside the lungs. The air outside does not have that humidity. The only thing that gets that humidity inside the lungs is the humidity at the surface of the mucosa. So this is why that surgery is damaging the mucosa and you uh, have no longer that humidity. And also the mucosa, the dry mucosa, swollen as I was saying in the beginning of the video and blocks the nostrils. So you get all these problems. There are also, um, there, there's also, so if you, know someone that's going to have a turbinate reduction, I think it's called a turbinectomy, uh, warn that person to ask the doctor, write it on the paper, what exactly the technique he's going to use, because there are other techniques that don't cut along the mucosa, they just go underneath the mucosa and reduce the turbinates. I'm not saying reducing the turbinates is a good thing, I don't believe so but that technique at least doesn't damage the mucosa surface so you still get that humid air inside the, the lungs so you will suffer less you will have less problems uh, so be aware what technique that doctor will use it seems strange in 2019 there are still doctors that use a technique that's damaging so much into, uh, to a person but medicine is not a perfect science and uh, it's not properly regulated, well, it's regulated, but they, they teach things in the um, University of Medicine that don't change that easily in the years, within the years. So there may still be, and not just about the nose surgery, could be in any other area, any could be brain surgery or fracture reduction. There are always older techniques that take time, take time to be recognized as not the best or damaging and take time to be discarded from the uh, teaching of medicine in the university. So don't think these are perfect science. They are not, they are always, uh, there's always a imperfection or uh, perhaps um, a uh, techniques in medicine that are not that good they are still as of today all around the world don't think because we have cell phones today that everything is perfect everywhere i did work in engineering and i know very well how many errors are done by engineers with accidents and sometimes without accidents but every science has errors and uh, their mistakes and their dark side or gray zone, which about things that are less known or not so good. So um, yes, this is it about that surgery. Uh, also, I know that some people with TNS, uh, I did, I, well, I had this issue, but uh, in the very few uh, first weeks after the surgery, uh, um, many people with ENS who got a lot of turbinate reduction, the, there's more or less turbinate reduction. So when a doctor does a lot of reduction of the turbinates, people complain about kind of not uh, feeling too much air getting inside their lungs and feeling a, having a feeling of suffocation, which is very, um, what's the name for this, uh, paradoxic, paradoxal. Uh, like when you get too much air inside the lungs, you feel suffocating is doesn't perhaps that is, is it looks like it's not logical, but it's actually very logical is that uh, if you reduce too much the turbinates, you will breathe too much air inside the lungs and the whole body is used to breathe just a certain amount of air and also feel a sort of restriction inside the nose. And when you remove that restriction is the whole balance of the body basically it's 
the uh, diaphragm muscle is a big muscle in the center of the body that's pulling down the lungs. This muscle is controlled by the brain. So the brain is set from your birth to pull with certain amount of force when you remove the turbines too much and that amount of force is no longer the same for that muscle. The brain gets confused, you get anxiety and uh, it's kind of disturbing the whole uh, breathing mechanism. I did not feel, uh, well, I felt like I was suffocating, uh, but only for the first week after the surgery. And um, I used, and uh, you may want to try this, but be just careful a little bit. I use, um, we have these air plugs, you know, those mushy air plugs. I cut pieces of that air plugs and I try to stick them just in front of the nostril, inside, but in front, not deep uh, inside the nostril, just to uh, basically uh, block a portion of the nostril to get uh, just let just a small section of the nostril to breathe through that and this kind of helped me not feeling I was suffocating but be careful with this especially in night time don't cut them too small because they can sw get swollen inside the nostril and you get problems from there you cannot recover them and pull them back uh, so uh, some, uh, someone else uh, said he used a uh, band-aid, just a band, you know, for scratches. He put a band-aid here at the bottom of the nose and left, uh, let the tips of the nostril open, only a small section of the uh, opening here open and cover uh, the other section. And this way that person could just cre recreate that restriction um, just like it's in a uh, healthy person could recreate that restriction after a turbinate uh, surgery and this can help you perhaps uh, especially during nighttime uh, regulate a little bit your breathing uh, and uh, just basically uh, breath more closer to the normal I hope I, I, I'm clear when I explain this is not exactly easy to explain but uh, I, I think you get the idea uh, but like I said, uh, only for the first week, weeks after the surgery, I felt like I was suffocating and I needed to block my nostril. After that, I, I did not feel any longer this. After that, I started to feel only blockage, dryness, and later on, heart beating. Um, so these are the tips. Uh, I hope this helps you guys. Any questions in the comment section below, also read it because I'll put uh, this list with foods. Uh, and a link for my other videos. So check those other videos in the uh, uh, in my playlist. There's a playlist. Uh, it's called Living with DNS Syndrome or something like this. So thanks for watching and uh, share your experience and uh, uh, advice. Good luck. Thanks.